Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new edition of Game Tales, a show where we talk about a great many things for about an hour or so, usually regarding video games or something else maybe, who knows, we shall see. Actually, what are we talking about today, Steven from the channel Steven Nonsense? Hey Unicom and good morning after moving to our listeners. Yes, it's usually most likely gaming or gaming slash tech related. Uh, we have been known to uh, dip into other subjects, but uh, today's subject is actually going to be about gaming and it's going to be that most uh, precious slash rare of occasions in which not only did, uh, did, did we play a uh, recent game, a recently released game, but both of us played the same recently released game. And we liked so we it a lot at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, so we thought uh, we, we thought do this uh, this episode about an actual recent game that uh, in not many people necessarily might have heard of outside of the you know uh, RTS 4X uh, turn-based strategy stretch, yeah. strategy yeah uh, interest bubble, and uh, we actually talked uh, talked a bit about it at the end of last episode. Uh, uh, this week we're talking about At The Gates. Do -do -do, do -do 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 -do. I actually don't remember what the music is, but I'm imagining it's something to do with knocking at the so gates. The music, uh, the music usually is very, it's very uh, operatic. Mm -hmm. it, right. It's quite epic and operatic when it starts. It's not a, it's a very, it's a very serious affair, the yeah. music, when, when, uh, when the, uh, when we, when you get it for screen. So we both made the uh, videos about uh, mm -hmm. at the gates. We're very um, positive about uh, the game at first. Super incomplete, positive. Like... Incomplete videos yeah. uh, has to be said. Due first to various, impressions. Due to various reasons, yeah. Um, so uh, I was, I was, and still am kind of. So I was very overly enthusiastic about the game. I said it, it more more or less is or could be a modern classic and one of the most complex 4Xs uh, made. I did, hey, uh, so in my video, I like to, you know, uh, I, I, in the YouTube's gaming uh, general bubble, people like to exaggerate about mm -hmm. all of the bad stuff. Oh my and God, this is the greatest thing I've seen in my life. It's, it's the... Uh... So, uh, so I'm going, so I'm going, I like to, I, I like to focus and maybe get enthusiastic about shit. That's nice. That's mm -hmm. good. Uh, so I'm going to try that as a, as a, some sort of a channel trademark. Uh, but then you, so the, my video is basically based on how much of the game I played. And even though I played about 14 hours of it due to me playing it on my laptop, uh, that prop most likely means I didn't get as far into it as someone else who uh, put in 14 hours on a properly functioning spin. Mm. But for my 14 hours in it, that was my experience of the game. Uh, from the start to about mid-game-ish. But you managed to go beyond the mid-game level, and that's where things yeah. get worked. It, it, it gets worked around the time you start making stone buildings that don't deplete the resources around you. Is once you can settle in, the game is over. There's just no challenge to it anymore. Nothing challenges you. And it's it's kind of sad because the, the beginning is amazing. Like the beginning gives you a sense of, oh my god, I, I'm alone with this tiny little tribe in a world that's trying to kill me. The weather is going to murder me. It, it's the yeah. same thing you have in Banished. Like, it, the first winter will yeah, kill yeah, you. Exactly. It is, it, yeah, banished, especially banished will, yeah, will destroy you, especially in the winters, because that's, mm -hmm. and again, the winter is, uh, so uh, we might be focusing a bit too much on the negative aspects in our video, in this particular show, but we'll try to also give you a sense of how good the game is and of its potential, yeah. basically, because, yeah, the the weather, the weather effects, both in terms of, uh, gameplay mechanics, as in how it affects your units and production and that sort of stuff, and also how you see it in the game, because you basically see winter mm -hmm. start closing in and taking over the hexes. Mm -hmm. which even, is like you even wonderful. see the colors change to uh, like fall colors. You see the trees whittling and dying. Yeah. That's, that's and a the sound thing. 
the sounds change as well because mm -hmm. when if there's snow it sounds when and you move units around this sounds like people walking in the snow if it's uh, leaves it's uh, like in the leaves it's a super and attention it to has, detail it has one wonderful detail relating to uh gathering especially plants the earth gets cold mm -hmm. and can't gather anything else you yeah. know like what happens in autumn once you, you can't grow crops is, in the winter. You cannot do that. And it actually shows you what and why and how and whatnot. So uh, I really, really like that. You know, uh, this this puts me on a tangent of my on. dream, my dream 4X or uh, strategy. So I want to see, I want to play a game. I want to see a game. I might have to make this game happen that takes uh, into account soil nutrient depletion. Hmm. That's just... That's just my really, and I have this thing ever since Fallout One, because you know in Fallout One in Shady Sands you meet that farm who's like, oh, these crops don't work, and he, the Vault Dweller yeah, explains you have what crop rotation is. Yeah, you do crop rotation because of soil nutrient depletion. So I would really love to see that. This would basically be. It will most likely be very narrowly focused on. I think that is in uh, Banish. That is a function that Banish has. Uh, in Banished, you get not not necessarily you get uh, diseases on mm -hmm. the plants, and uh, when it comes to uh, the trees, you need to replant trees that your for your your, your lumberjacks. But as far as the nutrients in the soil go, now it's the they will have occasionally they have like. Uh, varying yields, the the mm. plants that you, but it's not soil nutrient depletion level. I I would just want something so that you need to research and then mm. uh, apply something like crop rotation and I then know, fertilizers. I, I know there's a I know I've played a game that has that, but I'm not sure. It may have been one of the farms similar, but I still want to say, but maybe it was the more of a strategy kind of game. But I think it may have been Farm Simulator that I had that. Think the, I think that 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 now that's the type of detail I would like to get into when it comes to these things. And I don't know, there is a there is a one dev team working on a indie city builder called Neolithic, mm -hmm. which is just Neolithic. That the name it's Neolithic. And I'm curious if he might be thinking of something like that because uh, it's a very passionate project, but it looks pretty good uh, even at this point in time. And I know he has um, different blends of like using one resource to make several things or better things or that sort of stuff. Maybe he has something uh, around this. But this uh, this land getting cold and then mm -hmm. frozen is quite the closest to that feeling that I would want to see with soil nutrient depletion. On the yeah. other hand, also, one very important thing to mention with, with the winter coming, if you have workers like going abroad to gather plants and the winter comes and they can't gather them anymore, there is a chance they'll get snowed in and yeah. run, out of, run out of food and just die there. And that's superb as a mechanic. That is very, it is very, uh, it is in tune with, so the, the, the game takes place during the Dark Ages. You start in 400 AD. So yeah, that's... Uh, that's a long ass time ago. Mm -hmm. That that would easily happen. Like probably entire peoples have been wiped out by very nasty winters or yeah. stuff like that. If you don't start moving back home in the autumn, they're gonna die there probably. Yeah, yeah. It's or you know if if you're lucky enough, maybe you find like some patches of uh, a couple of hexes that could maybe barely sustain them because mm -hmm. that's a thing you can do. Also, you can encamp them in a. Uh, in a hex and they can survive longer but yeah uh, on the other hand what it doesn't do and it should especially for the I mean considering the issues with once you build uh, so the idea is that the resources get depleted then disappear mm -hmm. so if you have a hex with whatever it, it, it produces after a certain number of turns that hex's resource disappears completely uh, a certain number of turns that you have harvested it mm -hmm. Once you build stone buildings on it, that goes away, and you can that it produces uh, things nonstop. Yeah. Also, um, for, for example, if you build a farm, like a, far, a perishable farm, not not a stone building, on some wheat, if you tear down the farm in a couple of years, the wheat's going to come back, so it will grow back on its own eventually, but slowly. 
Yeah, that's that, that's kind of the thing. Like I, I was hoping it would. I, I was hoping the resources would regenerate a bit faster, especially the animals, because mm -hmm. animals basically regenerate on a yearly basis. There's like they, yeah, yeah. So I would have liked the idea of you like finding a herd of something and maybe I don't know harvesting it for like half of its turn limit and then letting it. Uh, basically go to uh, letting it uh, on its own for like a year mm -hmm. and then see the number increase again. But I have, I didn't see that with animals. So you'll be stuck with the, uh, with what they had left before. But if you build a, like a stone building on top of them when they have like a uh, half a pixel left, they'll go on forever. Um, I'm not sure about that. Cause I had a, I made a shepherds. I made, I made a sheep enclosure once. Mm -hmm a wooden one and i went in fam with my uh tribe went in famine mode and they started slaughtering the sheep mm -hmm. uh or the sheep um and then so i still had the hex with the sheep on it but when i clicked on it there was no production there was nothing there but it, it wasn't a stone building no it wasn't a stone it was yeah. just a, it was a, the log version of uh, the log will deplete it but they'll come yeah, back that, eventually yeah, you know, well, I don't know, but anyway, problem is, as you've mentioned, and after the after that point in time, after you build stone buildings, and I and I have just barely gotten to that point. I have like four or five stone buildings just declared the five, kingdom. Whoa. Like four or yeah. five is already end game level number of stone buildings. You don't need I any don't more. Know. Mm, I don't know. No, not really, because I have like I have a bunch of flax and some wheat and like one or two i think well, one or two for wood but in my game that is a lot. i'm in my game i'm still having i mean yeah, i'm i'm not overflowing with resources in my game yeah have I you do have have you trained any advanced professions that will increase the output of those buildings by four to five six maybe even ten times uh, I don't that, know, have that, a that is all they do all the advanced professions I have, just a, I have a couple of them but I don't have enough clans for those professions yet so that, there's that issue I do have a bit ex, a bit of extra money because I made a trading post oh and the trade and the trading post is actually cool because I managed to get like a a river, uh, a particular mm -hmm. hex that where you can build a. You know. But in my game, I'm still not, and I was kind of lucky in this game because I had one game in which the bandit clans basically fucked my fucked my shit up. Yeah, those guys and, are actually the the uh, danger in the game. The bandit clans at the beginning can absolutely screw you over. Yeah, especially at the beginning, I had the game in which they literally came over, and they were because of how the game is made. You don't know. You have no idea of predicting what type of clans or units you'll have to work with. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of the clans that you work with, basically, uh, th these will be your worker units, and they have preferences and they have abilities that tend to, you know, like kind of like in real life, like myself and Unicom, we're obviously more into the more righty, creative -y part of the spectrum. Very little ditch digging for the two of us. Mm -hmm. But so it's kind of like it would be kind of like making us uh, uh, having us uh, uh, dig some ditches. We're kind of maybe gonna do it, but we're we're gonna we're the gonna ditch is gonna suck. It. The ditch is gonna suck. Uh, we're not gonna be happy. You're not gonna be happy. So it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that with uh, with this one. You, you can have clans that are maybe all into uh, fighting and honor disciplines and stuff like that. But on the other hand, you could get a bunch of clans that are none of them are into that and mm. you kind of have to make like the, the the least issue the the least problematic choice in that so Could in you, that game or or you can get them all drunk and they'll do anything you want maybe i haven't gotten that much i i don't have enough grapes or oh, just I buy have, alcohol from the caravan yeah the, i haven't really i've i've only managed to heal one and once I've only bought enough oil because I have cloth because mm -hmm. I'm okay. I got flax and wool. So that's another thing that I really love and I mentioned in the video is that you can basically create the same resource out of different raw materials, which is such a, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air in terms of uh, this type of game. It also kind of screws the game's balance later on because um, one of the things you can make out of a different resource is is money. 
you just need coal to make yeah. money at one point. That that might be, yeah, that and might that be an issue. Totally and breaks the game. I'm pretty sure that can that that might just actually happen. I haven't found any gold veins yet. Yeah, it's you actually don't need like I I in my game I found three. One of them was gigantic. I never got the chance to actually mine that because I didn't need to. A mine will give you at best eighty gold. Mm. The coin maker mm. occupation will give you at a minimum one hundred, at a maximum around three hundred a turn. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. Thing is, we have to mention that the maps are randomly generated. Yeah. In uh, in general, the first three maps that you'll play are will be a bit more balanced. Will be a bit more. Uh, entry level friendly but from the fourth game onward it's gonna be mostly random uh, i think uh, john schaefer said that there is basically like six million uh map feeds in the game 600 sorry, mm-hmm. sorry about that. That was 100, 600 million uh map seeds in it so uh, maps are very random but as far as i can tell they kind of they, they make they, they make sense uh and the game I'm in, the the one where I'm successful, is uh, I'm kind of like in a desert sort of environment, and I think that's why I made it so far because winter hasn't been that bad. Mm. But if you're in the if you're in the mountains, uh, it's fucking horrible. So there's the, the beginning part till the mid part of the game. It's it's like it's very challenging. Yeah, it is. And very it can be great. Especially when you start playing it, because you need to learn. The game is has a lot of concepts you need to get used to. Mm-hmm. It can also be said that the UI can and should be improved. And what? Oh, it should and a lot. Should. And it should, but that's I. It wasn't that difficult of a of a of an obstacle because the game is so good. Um, but once uh, once the resource balance is all uh, thrown out of whack and that combined with the fact that you also said and i've i've also read that the the, the ai isn't really there per se it it's does very nothing passive. basically uh, yeah that that makes for not cool not good not a good experience post our videos basically mm-hmm. um, i've made a video with the my follow up to the the play i did i, I it's probably going to be on the channel this Saturday or Sunday. We're recording this Saturday, so it's not up yet. Uh, probably Raul will put it up tomorrow. So you will probably see that show by the time this plane, this uh, this game tales airs. But in that video, I just highlight how um, I declare war on an enemy by just pillaging their stuff. I was playing as the Huns. I'm going to get back to Huns soon. And th- they sent their army. They start with a bigger army than me. They start with a lancer and two men at arms, or I think two men at arms or two or two archers, probably something like that. And th- that's a big army for the beginning. That that could just wipe you out completely. Thing is, the AA does not understand how to move its units, so most of them died by the time they got to my village. They just died. Yeah. Now, I'm, I can tell, tell you for sure how uh, that game would have gone on because uh, I had my army like parked next to their mostly unprotected village like at the end of a turn and they attacked me like with their one soldier that would have probably been defeated by my horse archer because as the hunt you start with one horse archer and every time he attacks the game crashes and that's how I discovered the game is made using XNA. XNA, if uh, you don't know, is a platform that was made by Microsoft to uh, help people create in the games, usually for the Xbox 360. It was discontinued in around uh, 2012, and this report is famous for being quite buggy and problematic, and is the reason why Magica never works. It's kind of unfortunate that he he made it on that framework. I know he started making the game like seven years ago. But still, at seven years ago, XNA was still on the on the out. So he's been he, like he had it planned a longer time than seven years ago. If he started making it on XNA, or I don't know, and that and that and, and that might prove to be a a, a, a much more difficult issue yeah. to deal with. Because so um, uh, as as a result of the uh, mixed uh, reviews uh, on Steam mm-hmm. at the moment, and probably other feedback he's been getting, he has. Uh, like less than a day or a day after release, he posted uh, the um, the calendar for what he hopes to achieve with updates. Yeah, the, the plan for patches, the roadmap f- fixes the roadmap for updates for the next uh, the next half. Of- 
and the last one i think was I, in september should i send you uh the link can you put it on screen or i think i'll put it in post it's it's no worries okay i'm gonna okay. add it in post so and in within that list he does uh, he does address most if not more if not all of the issues that uh we have with the game more or less uh, uh, i ha- i looked over that that list and i didn't see massive changes to economy and professions listed there i think it's balanced i think that falls under hopefully, balance hopefully hopefully that is under balance and because balance issues are mentioned quite a bit we'll see about that that's uh, that's a problem that that's indeed the problem that should be solved either by changing the professions which is well, one I, way I of doing do. it um or you know changing the uh, the 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 end game economics of the of the thing the current problem with the game especially with the, the current uh, professions is that again once you been you build stone buildings uh, the challenge goes like <laughs> And since since this is a game that even he said that this is a PvE game, there are other civilizations out there, but you won't be fighting against them most of the time. They're they're purely passive. You can't even engage diplomatically with them. You can get alliances with them, but only if they send you a request and you say yes. If you say yes, you get a plus one to their their relationship level with you. If you get the five, they're your allies. You can then play as them in the campaign in in future games. We can conquer them. That's also an option. There is nothing else. You cannot trade with them. You cannot basically do anything with them. Yeah, and that that that, that is a bit of a, a a bit of an issue. That's true. Although I am in my video, I mentioned that there are there's a bunch of uh, what what seem to be purposefully underdeveloped uh, features in the game, mm-hmm. possibly saved for later expansions and whatnot. Because yeah, this is the type of you yeah, know, but at thirty yeah. euros, that should have been like at least a bit of diplomacy there. A, a... Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, you're 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 very right in that. In that, the the idea is we really don't know why the why the first half of the game is so well made, I guess, and why the second half is completely borked. Well. As from my experience of writing a book, I know why he put a lot of effort in the beginning, like to to make it like make it as good as possible. And okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the other bits as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna polish them and make them as good as this bit, and then kept pushing them back and putting them, pushing them back, pushing them back, delaying them, delaying them, delaying them. Then suddenly realized, oh my god, I have to finish this. Okay, let's get going. Okay, done. That, that that's how Tale of Doom got finished, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> if you're that, wondering. That, that might that might just be it. That's that's very valid. Uh, even me, like I haven't I haven't worked on my system in years, uh, but uh, I I do plan to. Actually, I haven't worked on it because I know I need it to be break. I I know I need players to break it because mm-hmm. I need to know where it breaks basically. But for the time being, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I plan on making something that is somewhat workable, at least for the beginning, for the first couple of uh, character levels, let's say, so that I get a uh, so that I can get a better idea of what works and what doesn't. Um, I'm not crazy enough to just work on something and like write a book worth of crazy um, of a crazy setting or a system, an RPG system, and then just see that there's like this very basic fundamental thing in it that simply doesn't work mm. on the other hand i haven't worked on it in years either so yeah uh it, it's the the idea of doing stuff versus actually doing yeah. thing. speaking of uh, little things that may get in the way of a uh, big project if you read tale of doom try and keep track if form is wearing pants or not i lost track i think he may not be wearing pants for most of the book because I mentioned well, at some point that he, he now doesn't have pants, and I don't think I've, I've added them back I, in at every I think point. It, I think it could be, uh, I think it can be construed at a certain point that, well, the character is obviously wearing pants now, or maybe he, you know, he, he put them on between between scenes or something like that. Yeah, let's hope so. Like, like in usually even, so in D&D, there is, depending on the type of setting or you know, system you're playing, there's actions that are kind of like free, like mm-hmm. unsheathing your weapon and that sort of stuff. 
but depending on how nitty gritty you are about the, about the detail, we don't. I mean, in my games, we never really took those into consideration. Like, oh, there's a fight. Yes, for the fight, we all have our weapons drawn. Because why the f- no? Unless it's like in surprise. In case there's if- a mimic in, in the tavern, you know, the table laughs. Yeah, even if you're even if you're taken by surprise, even if you're caught uh, flat-footed, yes, you can. It's no, it, it, there's conventions. We mm-hmm. we work with conventions when it comes to gaming because none of this shit is real. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So may yeah, I think maybe at a certain point people will just assume like I probably put pants on. I hope so because because th- the ending bits without pants are just be a kind of really funny. You need that. That's why writers have those have usually like the the printed pay, pages in order uh, around somewhere so that so that they keep can keep track of mm-hmm. the timeline and they scribble shit down. Around. But back to at the yeah. gate. So the the setting the setting choice is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, being set in the dark ages. Yeah, you don't and... really see a lot of games set in this period. Uh, the the only one that I can think of that had in mind to create something similar in a strategy game like you know one where you build something was medieval mayor where we started oh, off in the dark ages and you had to rebuild society from the the crumbling pieces of the roman empire yeah when we never got that one mm-hmm. or haven't got that one yet we oh, don't know hopefully one maybe, day maybe we can hope um now that's gonna be the, the if if anything related to that ever shows up we're gonna have to lobby hard to get uh, to get keys for that one um so yeah, the, the the setting of the game is really interesting. The way in which the uh, the turns are set up, it's you basically get two turns per season. Mm-hmm. If I or yep. is it more? That is correct. Okay. Two turns. It's twenty four turns a year. Okay, yeah. Um, so that's that's also nice. It's like beginning of and of basically. That's that's really cool. You get the caravan occasionally. The caravan, uh, I would say, comes around too often. It might, but the counter argument. My counter argument is that at the beginning, the caravan is the real only source where you can get tools and weapons. Mm-hmm. Well, no, actually, you, they... can, you can get weapons from bandits or from scavenging uh, locations. I know if you scavenge, but you don't get, you get like five weapons, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and that also implies you have clans that can fight properly. Uh, again, it's a it's a risk reward. Invest in something not invest in something else but with the tools you do need tools you need mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of tools and the caravan is the best source for tools and weapons at the beginning of the game um also for small number for small amounts of cloth if you want to increase your uh, clan number size mm-hmm. if you don't have anything around you that can make cloth yeah i was in a similar situation in my game because i never in my game i never found flax i never found stone I never found sheep. I pretty much didn't produce my own cloth, my own uh, clothes, any of that. My own st- I made my own stone just by buying rough stone from the caravan and making it into cut stone with the uh, the cutter I made, with the profession I made. With block the, cutter, yeah. Yeah, the block cutter. And the, um, the cloth thing, that I, I just outright bought from the caravan, simply. I never made anybody that actually worked with it. I do, I do enjoy that 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 particular aspect, but that aspect is worked later on. I do mm-hmm. enjoy the fact that you have to basically exploit what you have around you to its maximum potential because you that that's all you have, and it, it is kind of in tune with the setting that yeah. people had to make do with, with whatever they, they had around because this was. A, a bit, well, not a bit, quite a bit after the fall of the Roman Empire, and it was chaos in the majority of mm-hmm. uh, Europe. It was basically chaos. And, and if, not chaos, and, if you, um, if you and, don't have enough resources around you, you can always pack up your your village and move out. That's which why is really I, I cool. did that three times because the first I was in a region that was kind of a desertish region, so I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to move to a region that's more you know wooded and green with more wood. Moved there, found the Huns, ran away like a little girl, screaming. I probably shouldn't have because the Huns never did anything, like they never moved. 
Yeah, and that, that that is a very unfortunate uh, thing that the game lacks. Although in the list there is uh, at least two mentions of uh, improving AI. Oh, I, I hope so, because so that I'm I'm pretty sure they I'm. So my plan is I have, like I said so I uh, I posted a pinned comment on my video and also on my social media posts with an edit about what the game is like in the. Uh, after the mid game onward mm-hmm. and i'm still enthusiastic about it i still uh, i i still love it uh, love what it's trying to do so much that i do plan on making uh, at the gates content as the year goes on so i think i'm going to do my best to hit every major patch mm-hmm. and replay the game and in that way at the end of the year i'm going to have uh, like this uh this chronicle of, of how it evolved what, where, of where the game went uh, we will be able to find out at the end of the more or less at the end of the year yeah i did something like improve, i did something does. similar to that with uh, with space face df9 because space of df9 if you don't know was made by double fine a long time ago it was a, a sort of a rim world style game or uh, maybe not remote but maybe even banish style game if you will but you're in space you have limited resources you have to construct a space station have to harvest uh, asteroids that are perishable like once you mine them all they're gone you have no more resources you're dead it, it was a really promising game that at one point stopped receiving updates like right when it launched they, they launched it because they fired the person working the, the one developer working on it and it was really sad when it happened i was just making shows covering all its updates so i was really curious about how where, where it would go with this one however because it is just one person with no boss to fire him i think he may be actually able to go the distance and uh, like do yeah, what he, he promised did he has, he did mention he has a small team so uh, something might i mean there is a I, potential in it being done i remember at Conifer it's, games when uh, the kickstarter launched there were uh two other people there was a programmer and there was uh, the artist the artist i actually follow her on twitter she's she worked on the uh the elemental series as well on starduck mm. she's from starduck the has to be said that the uh, art direction is really nice oh it, yeah i love it, it. it's a very it's a very pretty game to look at um it's kind of like a uh, modern I, civilization I, too I, yeah, I, I would want to say uh, kind of like watercolor, but mm-hmm. not really. It's more like a combination, like a crayon sort of color thing. But it's not, yeah, it looks really nice. Yeah. And the animations are fun in the set. One thing, one thing that really bothered me about uh, the uh, the Steam reviews I kept seeing is that people complain about the graphics. Like, uh, I, don't I don't get know. people that complain, complain about... about the graphics. Yeah, I've no, seen people I, complaining I... about the graphics. The most I've seen are people uh, which are relevant. It's the UI. Which oh, yeah, the does UI need does need work. And the lack of uh, setup options. Yeah, you have to games. go into an XML file to actually change things. Apparently, you, yes. you, you can um, activate a mode that actually displays all the supplies available in every tile, but you have to enable it in the XML. That would yeah, have been well, useful, like, from the beginning, so that you could plan a route of invasion. Because uh, supplies, they're the most difficult part of the game. That never gets easy. Supplies will always be the most difficult part of the game. It's something that can absolutely ruin your invasion plans. Yeah, so to explain the to explain what how supply works in the game, basically, once uh, once a clan is out of your uh, out of your settlement, basically, once you have a unit moving around. Uh, then, they actually feed off the land. Mm-hmm. That's how they survive. And they also have it's their dope. own, like their own, um, like supplies they have with them for a bit. But yeah, you're yeah. not shown the number yet. It'll be added in an yeah. update. Uh, it's totally okay. They they will do very well if it's the spring and or summer generally. And, and if they're in a tile that may have like. Um, the supplies on them because rough terrain will not have supplies like some hills will not yes. have supplies and sometimes it goes a bit strange because uh, places where you can forage like for food where you can send a forager to get food yeah they will sometimes not have supplies on them yeah that's uh, that that's part of the convention of the, mm-hmm. the the idea being depending on the tile they're on they may or may not uh do very well yeah they, and they, they may they lose not... supplies get no supplies or get supplies 
like yeah. automatically. Uh, and if they're left for a longer time, if they basically if they end the turn on a tile that doesn't uh, have the required amount of supplies for them, they will start losing health and morale. Mm-hmm. And when that happens, especially in the winter, uh, when they can be snowed in and immobilized, yeah, you can lose uh, clans that way, regardless of their level mm-hmm. or how many up- how many upgrades you put into them or stuff like that. One exception exactly. is that there's ah. there's a Slav uh, tribe that you can unlock, which doesn't use supplies. So they they just drink vodka. <laughs> yeah, I think so. They just have they do not use supplies. They can move. Those guys would be just OP. Yeah, oh, I imagine they do have. They should have some other uh, uh, something to counterbalance that. But yeah. So uh, come back to um, to supplies. Supplies, like I said, are the hardest part of the game because moving an army takes a lot of time. Like uh, try, me, me trying to attack the um, the Huns with my Roman legions took me about a year. Even though I had like I had constructed paths like roads over the over the half a continent, the AI doesn't use them well. So you have to move them manually and hope that they don't get stuck in snow. Hope they don't decide to climb over a river. Because uh, instead of if you do run to a river, you will like lose a turn unless you have river people in your clans that know how to cross a river. Same thing with snow tiles, and mm. the, the movement like the movement is honestly the thing that discourages me from outright going to attack everybody I see because I probably will win. Because getting the army there that is the difficult part. That is that is actually a very good better game because Rome's biggest accomplishment wasn't that it conquered the world is that it could conquer the world. It could sustain an army. It could send an army hundreds and thousands of miles without all of them dying. That is Rome's major accomplishment. That is how it, it conquered everything. And Mostly that is what... because it built roads. Yeah. That's why. That's basically where all the roads uh, go to Rome uh, uh, saying comes from. Um, and that was uh, actually there, there. We still have there. There's still roads that yeah. are built. There's on still top bridges. Of what used to be, yeah. We still have aqueducts, although I don't know if the aqueducts work per se. But yeah, the, still the, standing. the aqueducts contain kind of a lot of lead piping, so they probably shouldn't be used anymore. Yeah, uh, they, they they're still standing and they're still functioning. Mm. So that that and that again, that works well with the setting. The problem is the game mechanics get shitty after after that point in time. And I don't know, the the thing is that, uh, so the game is, um, should have a, like a limited time span. You should have a limited amount of turns to play each game. I think, hmm. I don't think we, you can take it to 2013. Oh no, yeah. it's like the, the most I've gotten to was 417. That's where I ended it. That's why yeah, I, I don't know. And I just I, I could have probably ended like three, four years sooner, but I just kept stretching it on and on and on to see what the Roman legions do. Because at mm. one point in the game, you can spend resources to send any of your tribes to Rome or to uh, to Constantinople to train as Roman legions. And once you have five of them, you send them again to Rome to basically say, "Hey, uh, five legions here, uh, crown me something." Okay, now you're uh, you're a governor of this province. Okay, you win. And that's sort of yeah. the economic victory. It's really easy to, to achieve. So instead of doing that, actually after I did that, I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to get my Roman legions and just move them around the map and break everything. Problem is the Roman legions as a unit are horrible uh, compared to uh, compared to knights. You can make knights. Knights require you to have noble clans. So you have to uh, spend fine cloth to uh, make your clans, you know, more pompous and obnoxious. <laughs> But yeah, be... you need to. You need to. Um, what's the word? It has a word. It's ennoble. Uh, ennoble. Yeah, yeah, you need to ennoble the clans in order to have knights. Yeah, uh, you actually need that for a lot of the like super high tier um, uh, professions. The, some of them being completely game breaking. But uh, knights have the advantage of moving really far. Like I think they move uh, four, or maybe six uh, tiles, but they do consume two uh, two food, two supplies. Per turn, so they do. Uh, they they have more of a challenge when it comes to moving them, but they move fast. And also, they have. I think it was a hundred or maybe hundred and twenty attack. A Roman legion, which is what I replaced my knights with, thinking that the Roman legion will be better, has thirty attack. It's basically a man at arms. 
Uh, which yeah. is like two tiers down from, from the night. <laughs> it was not a very good upgrade that I made. Yeah, so those are the those are in general the types of uh, the types of thing. The one thing, so in one of my in this game actually, I had issues with food at a certain point. I had a lot of issues. I was almost close to zero. I actually went into famine mode, mm. and I tried to fix it by making a briner. Yeah, the briner doesn't seem to work well. Like I, I think it, it needs, I think it needs, it needs you to have like a plus a one surplus. to food. So they'll yeah. actually use it. I think it actually, it's like, I think he, because from the description I read and the whatnot, uh, you do need a surplus of food in mm -hmm. order for it to work. So there's also those type of weird things yeah. here and there. But um, but if you do have a surplus, the Briner and its upgraded version, which has 10 times the output, like instead of making 10 food from one food and one salt, it makes 100. That okay, is just... That that is a bit too much. Yeah. The numbers are just too insane at the high level. Um, for me, um, have you had the chance to play with uh, other factions than the gods so far? Oh, no. But did you enjoy my goth joke? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. It was, it was very dark and very... <laughs> it made me want to hide in a um, server closet. That's, That's it. fine. It's um, one of the things I initially thought the game would have um, have more staying power would, would have been the, the, the clans, because the different tribes, I mean. Each of them has a different trait to them, and I thought that that would make the game a completely different, or at least a sufficiently different experience each time with each of them. The Huns are a completely different experience. The Huns have no buildings. They can never own buildings. They will always be moving around using perishable resources. That is probably the best way to play the game. That is the, the, the tribe. That, that's who you should have started playing with. That, that should have been enabled from the start. Because that offers you a challenge. That offers you... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a parenthesis. A parent, yeah, parenthesis. Um, it would have been a challenge if the Huns didn't start with, uh, with a horse archer with 12 attack. They can sort of curb stomp over most other, like bandits are no longer a problem. If you have a 12 attack unit at the beginning that moves six hexes with one supply, that's going to murder every bandit. And that'll get you a bunch of resources from the band. You'll get horses, you'll get weapons, you'll get food. You'll be able to raid everybody's stuff and get all their resources with just the starter unit you have. And that's when the, like, the clan that was the, uh, the tribe that was supposed to be the most difficult to play with sort of becomes kind of easy. Mm. Like, it, it, even that one, the, has, even uh, the challenge, even, and even that one is sabotaged a bit. Like, it's sabotage right at the beginning, where everything else is harder for everybody else. The Huns have it easier. But I think the Huns may have a bit of a hard time later on because um, lacking buildings, they can't scale production as much, I guess. Do we still have uh, professions that will, um, like, double, triple, quadruple the output of gatherers and reapers? Well, so I, I think it may... I haven't played enough with the Huns to make sure that they are not as broken in the endgame as well. But all the other ones... They don't really have any disadvantages. Uh, actually, there's one. There's one that has a minus 50% fame. But I do believe they start with eight clans. Mm -hmm. I think that was the, uh, the trade-off. Uh, starting with eight clans, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. You can already sort of have your production pipeline set up. But all the other ones just have advantages. Like the, the, the Slavs, that the, they don't use supplies. One of them has a really strange... Um, like disadvantage that they are, they're always in an alliance with a Roman uh, faction. That never comes up in the game. Being in an alliance with somebody will never come up in the game. It won't influence anything you do. Yeah, there's also um, one of the uh, very... Uh, something that appears or that is sort of mentioned, uh, a feature that is mentioned that it appears in the game but is really underdeveloped, is the religious well, yeah. affiliation. That's mostly because uh, I told the humble come and say, hey, uh, you want to be uh, my religion? If yes, I'm going to be your pal plus one. If not, I'm going to be... Uh, but again, that... Uh, so both the diplomatic relations and the religious beliefs uh, should be uh, part of like major uh, major 
updates to the game because yeah. those uh, th- those were also very important for the for the time period as well mm-hmm. and they're in general important features of uh, 4x games unfortunately yes like like with this and they are uh, they're not even the, it's like a token presence yeah let's say uh they're there but like, yeah i was thinking at least that maybe switching religions would piss somebody off but nobody cares it's just a toggle well, yeah, no, because the uh, as we've said, the uh, the AI is pretty passive. No, not even your own clans. You would think that. Well, when I initially saw the game, I thought it was going to be a bit similar to King of Dragon Pass, because you know the the tribes people in King of Dragon Pass, they can do crazy stuff. Like I sent one as an envoy with a lot of money to another tribe, you know, to make peace, and he ran away with the money. Nobody in in uh, in other gates will do anything like it. They will get angry, and I think if you don't give them something to drink. They may do something, but in like a year of being angry, they didn't do anything. So I know their 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 production goes uh, tanks. the The longer they're pissed, the less productive they are. Yeah. That has happened because they they will have feuds. That is very yeah, feuds, of Dragon Pass as well. Feuds are the only thing they actually do. Uh, sometimes they will get upset if they suddenly decide that they want a different uh, job, but that happens. Well, actually, that probably depends on your luck, but it hasn't happened all that often to me. It happened like three, four times in three hundred turns. I don't know. For me, it happened quite a quite a bit. Like it was if, quite. A, if if yeah. I made sure to give them jobs that they were okay with at the beginning, they they really didn't speak out. Uh, I did the same, but mine still. Some of them, a bunch of them, actually still. Uh, they, again, it depends on the. All those traits are random. Mm-hmm. So. Regardless of like, some of them will have the the trait which uh, basically um, uh, governs this uh, switchy this this wishy washiness is called desire, mm-hmm. and uh, they either have desires or don't have desires. But if they do have desires, they can have a lot of them. They can have like four times as much desire, and that that basically just increases the chance of them uh, basically throwing a fit yeah. and wanting to take their toys and go home. And that, that happened quite quite a bit to me. Uh, I found the I found clan management to be much more of a much more of an involved part of the game, at least in my game, because yeah, I had to deal with a lot of. I had some of them were uh, had uh, were leprosy. Yeah, I usually send and, those out as explorers or people that will never be in contact with anybody else. Yeah, and if if uh, if a clan with that sort of a thing has, or like the clan with leprosy, is on the same tile with other clans, they just they just bomb everybody. Yeah, everybody's gonna everybody be really else. sad. But if you have somebody so that's I, charismatic in there, nobody will ever fight. So if you keep a charismatic character in there, yeah. you'll have no feuds. Yeah, the 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 leprosy uh, person a clan, I just made them like loggers. So mm-hmm. I'm like, no, you guys. You're a lumberjack and you're okay. You're just <laughs> gonna go hang out in the forest by yourselves and work all day. Yes, uh, and you can dress whatever way you want. No one, no we one's judging everybody. that. But no one's judging that. But I just don't want you to bomb everybody <laughs> else out. So for me, that was that was a bit. I had a bit more, uh, a bit more of an issue uh, with Phantom Clans, and I also got the King of Dragon Pass Five. But uh, just like with the other things, it just it's not that game. King mm-hmm. of Dragon Pass is so so wonderful, so wonderfully well done. So and it has it's gonna get the its spiritual oh, success six ages here. Six ages has been released on the i store Ooh, tunes nice, thingy, nice. and this year it should be coming to PC as well. Awesome, because I've been I've been in contact with the dev. And yeah, I'm gonna look really looking forward to playing Six Ages. But King of Dragon Pass is uh at the gates is the closest to king of dragon pass in terms of what the 4x could be well could be not is it doesn't have magic that's true which yeah is, which is a good thing the, well if if you would well, the, the grand strategy channel was sort of conceived as as a naming scheme to describe a 4x in real time so in that case i would say the crusader kings 2 is a lot closer to uh king of dragon pass than at the gates is because in, in that game, you do have a lot of characters that do have traits, like a lot of a lot of traits that can make them do super crazy things, like marry their horses or kill their kids. 
Well, uh, King of Dragon Pass isn't real time technically because you make decisions yeah. in turns. But I mentioned this season. that uh, grand strategy uh, is is used to describe things like civilization or maybe even like King of Dragon Pass, but in real time. Which I wouldn't, I wouldn't I wouldn't call King of Dragon Pass grand strategy. No, 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 no. but that's what Crusader Kings Two is. Ah, okay. And technically, it's sort of splintered off from Europa Universalis, which was initially turn based. So it's it's in, it's in a it's in its own thing, but it's splintered off from uh, from Forex. And when I'm talking about Crusader Kings Two, which is ha has a lot more layers of complexity than um, than at the gates in terms of its politics, its characters, its not its economy. Its economy is absolute garbage. It's just one resource you get from tax. So it's um, that's kind of a same level. This one actually. But you do, you do have once training it, as well. Once it, once it balances out. Uh, sure. Um, also, how do uh, oh, how oh, oh. would you... Yeah. One more thing. Um, the, 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 one of the interesting aspects, as you said, is the clan management. That you have to be careful with how you manage them, how you put them into what areas. Uh, there is a profession called instructor that just removes negative aspects from the clans. Yeah, but it's not really that cheap to do. It does cost like 40 parchment, I think, to remove one undesirable trait. And yeah, that's kind of, uh, at least for the most. Yeah, most at, at of the, the game. beginning, it'll be a lot. After the midpoint, you'll, you won't have anything to do. You, you literally do not have what to do with parchments other than sell them. Mm. Um, I think you kind of use it to use them for something else. Uh, f yeah. I think you need them to upgrade some stuff. To ennoble some... I think you need to uh, find cloth and parchment to ennoble clans, I think, with something. I think it makes sense. Anyway, yeah, I, I'm, I'm aware that... Uh, I know that exists, and I found it to be interesting, but uh, never really got to... I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I didn't I, even I bother like... with it, because I set up my clans in such a way that pretty much nobody that can that has a desire to fight with somebody else is ever with somebody else. And it works. Yeah, and and I like that. I like that. Maybe, yeah, maybe the instructor should uh, should get eighty six that for, mm -hmm. for because it, it it would take away from this balancing act that you have to do, especially mm -hmm. at the beginning. One other thing I I learned to do during my game was basically profession cycling through the same logistics chain with the same clan. No, oh, to upscale them. Not necessarily, no, to just get, some, so uh, it was about getting stone. I didn't have any type, any type of stone, but I did have uh, coal mm -hmm. or logs. So I had the clan first become a coal maker. They would make me a bunch of, a bunch of coal. And after I had a bunch of coal, I made them become brick makers. <laughs> they can make me stone. And then when I ran out of stone, I dialed them back at becoming coal makers to become, because I didn't have enough to have... Uh, it's i've never had like a, an entire an entire production chain uh, present i only have like bits and mm -hmm. pieces and stuff you have to juggle which uh, one of them you can use yeah and i also found that to be quite interesting and quite challenging but i, I don't know I, if uh, since later on it becomes so uh, imbalanced that might not be that that big of a important part towards the end of the game obviously. yeah if you're playing with a uh, like a faction that can use so anybody other than the Huns uh, that can use buildings, uh, you have a, a profession called the engineer, which doubles the output of a building, and then the engineer has two upgrades, which increase by half and then by half again the output of all buildings, all of them. Has to, yeah, it has to be said though, uh, an entire clan has to become these professions. Yeah, but that clan will increase the output of every every building so you can pretty much yeah, that's true you can have one single like one single um worker gathering wood for you in, in a stone building and his output would be upgraded so much that you you don't need any more yeah that's that that is uh that that is an issue that yeah. that is a not not great point of design and i think you're right i actually talking about it i think you're actually right as obviously the first half of the game had a lot of yeah. care and attention put into it. And I, I don't know if you can see balancing, but things yeah. are challenging. Yeah, it is and, challenging and, and satisfying work, as well. Yeah, And things work. But then after that particular point, it's it sort just... Of it, off a cliff. Yeah, it just goes all to hell. Um, but 
he is aware of it. He is uh, working on it. Uh, hopefully, the choice of engine won't be that big of a problem in yeah. the future. He and mentioned that at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, no no well he, I mentioned um, in the uh, the scene forums that th- there's a bit of an issue right now if you try to capture an enemy settlement, which is something that you can do if you're not a hunt because you can build buildings as a hunt. But if you capture an enemy settlement, like I tried to do, um, you can you can put your units in the settlement like like you would in your own and you get them to rest in the settlement, just, just hang around there. Thing is, that settlement is isn't actually conquerable. So if you Put your soldiers into the settlement. They will be yours, but they will be stuck there. You can never get them out. You will never be able to recover them. So they're lost. So the the game kind of doesn't have a contingency plan for the option it gives you to conquer a settlement. Mm, And the developer mentioned that he will fix that in patch 1.1 or 1.01. Yeah, obviously. So a couple of things. Um, can be easily uh, sort of solved by just uh, 86ing a bunch of professions mm-hmm. and most likely, uh, you know, downgrading yeah. a bunch of them. Some numbers need and to be f- cut. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a similar issue that, I, that you see in some MMOs like World of Warcraft where damage is now or was at one point in the millions. They had to update the game and... Uh, of uh, the wor- uh, worlds of drainer to like basically cut all the numbers by ten thousand or a thousand just so they would make sense again. Yeah, they made they did the the I don't the know crunch. What they, oh yeah, the denomination. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to do that with money as well at yeah. a certain sometimes. Um, yeah, that has to be done, but not for the same reasons. This in this case they have in the case of WoW it was literally that that takes up. Despite, regardless of how powerful the computers are, the more digits the numbers have, the more processing power it will actually take to deal with that. So it's, it was more of an issue million, of them taking too much space on the screen. That too, I'm pretty sure that too. But I'm pretty sure it made uh, it made their logs considerably cleaner and whatnot mm-hmm. as well. So I think that's a, that's important uh, to have uh, in consideration as well. Uh, in this case, it's mostly about the fact that they are uh, really imbalanced and that sort yeah. of stuff. So I think eliminating some professions would work, modifying some others. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, I was thinking how to solve the issue with the stone buildings. So there definitely, there, there's definitely, there, there has to be a benefit to making stone buildings. Yeah, maybe you can get stone buildings like maybe get them like maybe get the wooden buildings to just fall down after a while the stone buildings however will not fall down but they will still deplete the resource and you'll have to wait for the resource to regenerate so maybe yeah, that. I, I was i was thinking about that actually like having you should have a period of time every x couple of turns you will have a y number of turns in which those don't produce anything but the clans do have to be in them to tend whatever mm-hmm. it is they're tending yeah they have Whether to they have uh, to rebuild basically to, like i don't know uh, build the yeah, soil or something re- yeah exactly they either rebuild the have to wait a while to uh, replenish the numbers of the herd or bring in fertilizer whatnot um that and that would be really interesting because uh, in my uh, in my opinion, I think it would bring a bit more of a it would add in another layer. Because if you would if you want like a constant influx of resources, you'll want to make sure when you settle on a stone mm-hmm. building, because you want you won't want all of them to go on break at the same time. Yeah, you also have to diversify your uh, your. Uh... The resources that you use, you can't just focus on a single resource because that one, when that yeah. one goes, like you will need the other ones to. You'll be out over. of it. Yeah. Granted, even now, I do have like two or three separate types of resources. I think it would require a bit more attention to basically limiting the amount. You should you should get the option of telling. Uh, your profession how much they should work Mm -hmm. like yeah you can do 10 things but i don't want you to do 10 things i want you to do seven things because i need that extra three raw material to make something else 
like you just slaughter the pig. Yeah, don't make it all ham. Make a half of it ham, and I'll make the, the half of it sausages, basically. Yeah, you can currently um, des designate some uh, items to not be consumed, but you can't really split them into what they can be consumed for and what they cannot be consumed for. You can just say stockpile it or no. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking, you know, like I'm, would mm. you would just uh, would just the spitballing what 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 other things uh, could help the game. I, th I think I may know one thing. Um, when I started to migrate my tribe from uh, a coast of the continent to the other one, I started building roads because I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to need a road to actually get my tribe there in safety and be able to go back to that area when I need to. The thing is, um, I never got to finish that road completely. There's like some hexes missing in it, but it doesn't matter because um, I have like uh, my, my, my lumber yard. The first, one I, the first one I built is like at the edge of a, like sort of where Spain is. And my, my kingdom was founded, like I established a kingdom, like right around where Romania is. Mm. But still, every turn, even on the road, I get all the wood from there. All of it. Yeah, that it is. And again, that's about, about where movement is so difficult that it's, it's, it's a very, very hard to master component. That kind of sabotages yeah, it a bit. Be, mm, it would be cool to have a. Uh, like, like needing a, to build a road. Not, yeah, not necessarily a diminishing return, but or a delay. The, the yeah, the the longer the distances between the settlement and the resource producing hex, you know, after a certain number of hexes, mm -hmm. you get less because I don't know, it's hard and shit gets it falls off a truck. Yeah, uh, and what it falls off the cart <laughs> and what that. So that would also be that would actually be both. It would make it, it would help with the overproduction issue yeah. and it would also be very thematic and work within the setting quite well i think that's a, that's a very that's a very valid idea but let's uh, so this game tales is going out after your second video yeah, hopefully so. i will yeah i won't be making an at the gates video for at least a bunch of months maybe i am actually I'm waiting for my computer. Uh, I'm, wa I'm waiting for my uh, uh, CPU to arrive. I did get an email that they will be sending me a new CPU. So, yay, we'll see. I'm going to make a nonsense guess when that happens. Uh, but I don't want to spend the extra amount of time of playing it on my laptop because mm -hmm. it is extra slow on my laptop. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's not a super fast game. And I don't know, don't know exactly why because the AI doesn't do anything. It just moves. I, I, I think it may I be using it... the processing time to like uh, change the the map, and because it's using X and A, it sucks at it. Poss possibly, yeah. It's pos I was gonna say it's probably an optimization issue more than anything. Because um, I'm not entirely sure if X and A is actually uh, how should I put it? If it's if it's built to use more than one core, I, th I think mm. it may be able to use two cores because it it was built for the Xbox 360 and that had like two usable cores for games. I'm not sure. I don't know. I really don't know. But the, the, the good part is that, that, that thankfully the, the game will run on my old, old video card that I have in my Athlon 64 build. Like it's listed as the recommended video card, so it'll work on that. that that's that's, that's a beautiful that thing. Oh, yeah, it, it, it works on my laptop, but it's it's kind of really slow, unfortunately, just because there is a lot of tooltips and that sort of stuff. Although, granted, it has to be said, tooltips are really cool because you need, to, you need yeah. a bunch of explanations. Some of them could be better than others. They're not that crystal clear. And you definitely need the option of actually uh, toggling them off or just getting like not not, not all of them at least. Mm. That's more of a that's more of a nuance thing that that I think that can be fixed faster. I gotta say, being able to to keep notes or have a, a keep note button like in the upper left corner and being able to add notes to everything like units to the tiles and all that is that is a feature that a lot of games lack and it's something that is really useful mm -hmm. to keep track yeah, of stuff. I forgot to mention that 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 is actually really cool. Like especially at the beginning, you look through. You, whenever you get a new clan, it just goes with a quick dis description, and you can look through it, and you're like, "Oh, this clan should be this or not this." Mm -hmm. But then, if you don't, uh, if you forget about it, then you're just gonna have to spend time and go through them all over again and see what what. But with the note feature, you can just write "not soldier" or. Mm -hmm 
soldier or something like that or discover or something like that or make sure this guy gets lost in the snow yeah um so uh, th- yeah that you should also be able to uh like kick clans out i think mm. i just send them to explore stuff like i make them an explorer and just send them out in the desert somewhere and just die oh by the way the bandit clans if they catch yeah they catch them they, if they attack like uh, gatherers and that's what if they attack non uh non military non combat non military non combatant non combat units because some units will fight back yeah they explorers initiate, will fight back yeah they won't initiate uh fighting but they will fight back basically anything that has an attack bandit. power yeah and kick bandit as generally but uh, if the if a bandit clan just finds like a harvester somewhere and goes on that tile it basically makes that clan a bandit clan now yeah and you've lost them yeah you can get them back i know if you find them but uh, it's just interesting that happens i've recruited like i think 10 clans that way from enemy uh like enemy, yeah, there's, there's the opposing factions and then there's just the random white flag ones and mm-hmm. i was kind of uh, curious because uh, there were like three um three buildings owned by a white uh, white flag uh AI player, and once I captured them, I, I got there like they had a level ten. Uh, uh, one of them was a logger, and two of them were were farmers. They were level ten, but they weren't producing anything. And I thought, why are they producing anything? Like this was after a well, while after I became a kingdom. I thought, why aren't, aren't these buildings doing anything? I told them, oh wait, these are wood buildings. They ran out of resources like ten years ago, and they're still there. They did nothing for ten years other than just stand there. And that was kind of sad. Because everything about the map is dynamic. The weather is dynamic. Resources are dynamic. The AI just isn't. Yes, that, and that is one of the... I think that's going to be by far the mm-hmm. most difficult thing to implement and to actually balance out with the other. I do hope... You know what I hope? I hope that they over uh, they overcompensate in at least one of the patches and we get like... Super, super aggressive yeah. mother of <laughs> Gandhi bitches. <laughs> yes. Yes, I nook you. Yes. Very, very nooky. Uh I do hope that actually happens. Or like, like for at least for a for a period of time. Like just like um uh Obsidian accidentally released the turn based mode mm-hmm. for pillars too, like a, a a bit earlier than they wanted to. I just hope at a certain point at the gates has like a period of a patch that it's just fucking warfare mm-hmm. and it makes it really difficult and they're like oh shit no it should be that difficult I'm, I'm i'm hoping that actually happens but again so as i was saying gonna wait for my desktop my cpu to return hopefully that was the issue because oh, I if i install so. the new if i install the new cpu and it still doesn't work i do not know what else I could ex- change in my computer <laughs> to make it work, because at this point in time I've changed my the motherboard and the RAM and the video cards. So yeah, uh, but hopefully everything is gonna be fine and it's gonna work. So after I get my desktop, then I'll restart playing at the gates, and uh, I I plan to actually get a uh, get a one of those update sort of videos out with each major patch at least and uh yeah keep uh i'm 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 still very positive about the game uh i i don't really think my initial enthusiasm was it might have been over enthusiasm I'm yeah gonna, calling I, it the most complex rt uh for yeah, x yeah. was a bit much and the other yes on the other hand clickbait yeah so, yeah. yeah, I, I am. I am trying. You, you to You can't get go more. wrong with clickbait. Like, I know. I we, know. We I, haven't I, done clickbait a lot on the channel, and that's why we have three hundred views on our videos instead yeah, of three thousand. I don't. I really, uh, I really don't feel bad about it because uh, I, just, I just don't. I can Again, I am trying to be clickbaity in a positive way, at mm. least. So I'm going. I'm going for the enthusiasm and positive. Uh, as opposed to everything is shit. So yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but if you, um, and talk to the viewers now, if they are interested in a different for like a, quite a different Forex experience, check out my video on Driftland, the magic revival, which is ostensibly it's real time strategy, but you can pause it and make decisions while you pause it, which 
kind of. It's kind of like a grand strategy game. It like kind Crusader of Kings or Europa Universalis. Strategy if you yeah. Can, yeah, if you can take breaks and then decide stuff. Yeah. And it and it literally has to do with you capturing floating islands and then building shit on them. So it's it's kind of like a I call it a, a real time strategy with pause slash 4x because it's that Wait, do you have and to build roads between the floating islands you have to build bridges oh my god that, that's uh what you want to call it the storm something it's it's the tetris yeah. rts game i forgot what this name was it's a, it's a free Big. game uh, i don't know it, it was launched like 20 years ago once you build that that's how you connect the other islands to your islands via the bridges mm -hmm. and so cool thing is so, that the bridges can be destroyed and yeah. the other enemies can steal your islands. Yeah, so it's just like that. I forget what his name was. It's... <sighs> There's something in the sky or uh, Zeph, you know. It's, it, it's it's a really... It's a, like 20-year-old game. It was it was great. You were sort of playing Tetris with the, the bridges because you could never like build the exact shape you wanted for the bridge. You had to basically get what the, what the game was giving you. So like in Tetris. Okay. And that, that was part of the challenge of the game. But I think the one you're talking about may be a spiritual successor to it. I don't know about that. I haven't know. But the idea is that the Driftland is really cool. It's, it looks great. It has very nice graphics. The uh, the AI is very fighty also. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. So if you're interested in this general 4X sort of realm, but not necessarily the civilization approach, uh yeah try try driftland check out my video because it's uh i it's a really it's a really fun cool game or try netstorm islands at war that was the older one it was released in 97. Mm. okay well not God, that it's old. i mean it is no it is it is not that but it is and yeah uh, look if you search for a strategy game with floating islands the first result that comes up is netstorm the second one is driftlands mm. Okay, makes sense. Well, Nestor has been older. It has more uh, internet uh, relevancy. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Drift Driftland is, uh, is a really nice choice. And I think I might have another uh, 4X for a bit uh, later in the year as well. But I don't know, because we'll see. We'll see about it. I, I might play something else uh, besides that. But anyway, so um, any, any other, uh, any closing thoughts? Well, I do hope uh, we get to see this game at its full potential because the beginning part of it really just made me fall in love with it. And the rest of it just sort of made me feel like it kicked me out to the curb and left me in the cold. Yeah, I haven't been this enthusiastic about the game since Tyranny. And I really love... And I said Tyranny would become a modern classic as well. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it might still. I still think that game is wholly superior to Pillars 1. Like there's no there's no doubt in my head. Mm -hmm. I haven't played Pillars two now, but with uh, them adding turn based mode, I am way more interested in playing it now. Uh, so I'll see about getting that at a certain point. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm sorry. Oh. <sighs> well, that's pretty much what I had to say about the game in terms of. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry. No, I was just, just hope. like closing. I, I, I. I uh, interrupted your closing thoughts no oh, that's pretty much all i had just with the hope okay cool i am uh, for my part and from i'm like i said gonna try playing it and do updates and hopefully uh we can have the same discussion in like half a year or at yeah, the end in, of the in year in september because the last special is in the the roadmap is in september I'm pretty sure that will change as time goes on. Those tend to change mm. uh, and things happen. But yeah, uh, I ho hopefully we can have this uh, show at the end of the or maybe not just about this uh, at the end of the year. And we can take stock of what we said now and then see what happens in the meanwhile. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, let us know if you enjoyed uh, us talking about an actual recently released game. Odds are, if you don't really follow either of our channels on daily, you might have not known about that, the gates. Um, a lot of the uh, comments I got was about from people who were like, I had no idea this existed. So that just goes to show that th th this was a big event for you and me mm -hmm. in our uh, But in not our for everybody else. But not for everyone else. 
Um, so uh, that 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 was uh, that that's why we're interested. If you enjoyed this, uh, very unlikely that we'll ever get to do this about uh, like a triple A title or something. Oh, probably not. No. But maybe maybe about other indies. We don't. Mm. We don't. We, we're, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, what do you have anything uh, planned for the upcoming week on uh, your channel? Well, apart from the show, I I was playing Anthem, the Anthem demo earlier, and thought to myself, okay, I'm probably gonna make a show about it. Let's let's see if what what the game's are like, what this demo is about, as opposed to the alpha. And I was just playing and thought to myself, why bother making a show about Anthem? It's everybody's gonna make one. I I don't really. I'm not in love with Anthem. I there is no passion there. I'm just gonna probably say, yeah, this. Yeah, it looks like uh, when you enter the suit, it has a really neat animation and shows you the suit is actually quite well well designed, well made. Uh, the, the alpha made me feel like the, the 2008 uh, PC port of the Wii version of Iron Man was a better game. Uh, this Ooh. version, yeah, this version of the game is a le- less Superman 64 mixed with Destiny. It, it, it's, it's a bit more, more, it's a bit less horrible, I'm less horrible in terms of being enjoyable for me. But it, it still is not, I, I don't have enough drive to talk about it, so I, I just won't make an anthem show. I'm, hey, I'm going to try and make something maybe. else like tomorrow. I know, I'm, I'm going to pull something that, out of a hat. Play that uh, Netstorm game. Yeah. Ma- see, if you, see if you can try track it down. The th- actually, it's free, it's free. Like, it's been free worth like 15 years. The thing oh. about Netstorm, Netstorm, I never figured out how to actually place the bridges because once you get like the, the terrorist piece, you have to like put them in a certain position and then press a button which isn't click or if it is click i don't know exactly how you ha- are you supposed to fit them together because i i spent years not knowing how to play it at one point i figured it out but i forgot yeah but now there's the, this whole internet thing you can just yeah. how to blah 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 click yeah. and you find out i guess there's that Hey man, you never know. That's a that, that would be a good idea. At least, at least it's something that you would be uh, at least halfway interested in mm-hmm. doing. Uh, I get the feeling also. Just like you said, yes, everyone will do Anthem, I guess. And our channels are really well, mine really not yours, bigger subscriber count. But even so, yeah, they're uh, all left mostly. Yeah, in um, when it comes to these like super major popular AAA stuff, there's other way larger channels out there that have the that YouTube will push out there. Yeah. So that's why that's why I focus on indies and uh, this year a bunch of older cool games because again I I really think these older games uh, need to be uh, taken out of the shed once in a while and talked about. Yeah. Uh, if for nothing else, then just offer a bit of context, like my, mm-hmm. like me playing Stronghold HD. That was that that was a. Uh, I'm pretty sure I would have had a completely different experience if I played it in high school, when mm-hmm. I had time to burn. But now, when I don't have time to burn, it's really not my. It's really not my bucket of syrup. Again, it's a good game. Exactly, it does exactly what it does. It's just not my. Not, um, not my particular brand, the cognac. Um, Actually, so yeah, I think I still I have the, the magazine where I first saw Stronghold in somewhere under it. I'm just going to go and get it just so yeah, I can yeah, show no my first interaction with Stronghold. Just one second. Go for it. Uh, it's totally fine. So that's why I think that uh, focus, that doing something that is actually not necessarily, uh, you know, current um, can actually help. Uh, especially since you just said you don't want to do Anthem. Like, fuck it. No, everyone else is going to do Anthem. People probably already have uh, a bunch of channels that they will go for, uh, go to for that particular information. So why not offer an alternative? Why not offer something that they really haven't actually heard about? Uh, especially, uh, uh, talking about this... Uh, Driftland uh, precursor sort of thing. So on my channel uh, this week, I will have either a video game review, a quick one, or I will have an actual honest to goodness uh, tabletop RPG review. Uh, It depends on how much time I actually have to put in. 
relate to the RPG, to the tabletop RPG review, but I will try to uh, get the tabletop RPG review because I plan to go on a bit of a on a bit of a holiday uh, in mid February. So I I might wanna uh, hold the video the video game review for that period. And voila. Ah yes. Nice and shiny. Yep. The thing that really got me into this game back then was pretty much the this last screen, like here. Look at that beautiful castle. Oh yeah, I then I did say that. I did say that it looks uh it looks good now. So back then it, oh, it looked have amazing looked great. back then. Like everybody yeah, loved exactly. it. Like look at look at that score. Oh yeah, ninety four percent. Yeah. That's amazing. It is, it is. Uh, so I was just telling, uh, I, I was just filling the air and uh, uh, told our uh, listeners slash watchers about my plans for this next week, which you get to listen to uh, when you edit this. Okay. Um, and I think, uh, I, I think this means uh, you all the, ooh, Alien vs. Predator 2, mm-hmm. Civilization 3, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think so. This means next game tales will actually get to talk about D and D, uh, D and tabletop RPGs, which might actually fit in better if I actually, uh, yeah, get to do the tabletop RPG review this week or next week. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, oh, I think, uh, speaking of of this this particular magazine, this is the first non pirated game I ever owned. Hmm. I, I, I had it for like two years until I loaned it out to somebody that lost it in Bucharest. So I never loan games anymore to anybody. Of course not. They, they, they never bring yes, it back. Yes, Seven Kingdoms. That was uh, the, that particular magazine was very... At a certain point, they managed to somehow offer yep. full games uh, with their, uh, on their CDs. So uh, that was, that was kind of cool. The second one they offered was International Rally Championship 2002. And the third one was Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Oh, The succession really? was without the expansion. Ah. Sadly, I didn't get to buy that one. Mm, I didn't. I don't remember that one. Yeah, but it was so sad also. Uh, but yeah, I was uh, I was finishing up. So, time to, say, time, time to say our goodbyes. Yeah, well, we'll see you again soon, people. Next week with... The D&D and tabletops and dungeons and dragons and RPGs and all sorts of stories about how we got kidnapped by wolves or caused other people to get kidnapped by wolves. We'll see. Yeah, that, that has to happen. Goodbye. See you next time. I don't know which one. It's one of them. Somewhere. <laughs>